Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad to be with us today. I'm going to answer a question today, and I get this question a lot in my offices. And the question is, why am I so tired? I hear it all the time. Patients say, Dr. Joe, I got neck pain, back pain, and shoulder pain, and acid reflux, and sciatica, and I've been in a car accident. But kind of an overwhelming response I get from most people. I say, is there anything else? And they say, I'm tired all the time. Is there anything I can do or anything I can take? Now, there are supplements, of course, you can take that'll help with fatigue. Uh, Dr. Joe's adrenal support, uh, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide is like off the chart when it comes to fatigue. Uh, B-complex. So if somebody's really tired, I'll get them on adrenal support, nitric oxide, and B-complex. And in most cases, they're like, oh my gosh, Dr. Joe, I don't do uh, coffee anymore. I don't do caffeine. I don't do chocolate. I feel great. And you're amazing. So instead of artificially stimulating your body, we give your body the nutrients that it needs to give itself energy. And so uh, with caffeine, if you do caffeine, the way caffeine works is there's a chemical in your brain called adenosine. And adenosine is released in the brain, and then it's absorbed in what's called an adenosine receptor site. And that's the thing uh, that makes you tired. So that's a normal process. Your body is running. Your body starts getting tired. Brain says, let's produce some adenosine. Let's get Joe or Garrett or whoever to get tired. Okay, so the body gets tired. Caffeine looks like adenosine, structurally. So in fact, caffeine gets absorbed into the body and blocks up the adenosine receptor site. So now your body can't absorb adenosine. So if it can't absorb adenosine, you don't get tired. And it also is a stimulant to the nervous system as well, but that's the mechanism behind caffeine. So what happens is your body's smarter than you. So your body says, wait a minute, I need to get tired. I need to rest. So then the body produces more adenosine receptor sites. So you can absorb the adenosine because, again, caffeine's blocking it up. And so where it used to take maybe one cup of coffee to get you awake, now it takes two or three because your brain is actually changing. It's physiologically and physically changing to absorb the adenosine. And you then have to drink more coffee to fill in these adenosine receptor sites. And that's why the game is, goes on and on. You drink one cup, two cups, three cups, ten cups, whatever it is. So... That's one thing we can do, or we can give your body the nutrients that it requires in order to function more efficiently and not need to get tired. B-complex is good for that. Adrenal support is good for that. Dr. Joe's nitric oxide is good for that. Uh, And so that's what we try to do is get people on natural foods. And then, of course, the minimum supplements you should be taking every day, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Um, I don't know how many times I say that. That's the minimum supplements. And somebody just sent me a question today on the website, drjoe.com. What's the minimum supplements I should be taking? And I said, well, I don't know you. Everybody's different, but at least Super Green's an essential source. But most people need a lot more than, not a lot more, but need more than that. Uh, But again, you asked me the minimum. I'm answering your question, but it's not what you require. It's what the minimum is. So So if we get people on Super Green's an essential source, many times that alone gives you plenty of energy. Uh, I had a patient come in the other day, and a uh, young girl, and she looked at me and she goes, I am very mad at you, Dr. Joe. And I said, why is that? She says, you didn't tell me I shouldn't take essential source and super greens at night. I said, oh, did you take it at night? She goes, oh yeah. I said, up all night? She goes, oh yeah. She goes, good news is I got a lot done. Had a lot of energy, I got a lot done. So uh, some of the supplements I have, to, most of the supplements I take in the morning because they just give me so much energy. I can't get anything done. I, 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 I lay awake at night. So I get things done during the day. I, I just can't get to sleep. So, so one of the things uh, to answer the question why you're so tired all the time is your body is many times depleted in nutrients. We give it the nutrients that it requires and bam. So instead of coffee, of course, super green, essential source, B-complex, nitric oxide, and uh, adrenal support, and you're going to get natural energy. You're not going to get that shaky caffeine energy where you go up and then you crash, you go up and you crash. It's a constant steady. And if, if you never had that type of energy – it's pretty cool. Okay. People really enjoy to be naturally high and not artificially high, artificially stimulated. So uh, that's really a good thing. And the other thing we're going to talk about today too, if I get to it, is water. Uh, So many of you are are dehydrated. You just don't drink enough water because there's a part of your brain, it's in the hypothalamus, that controls hunger when you're a baby and another part of your brain that controls thirst. And as you become a toddler, those two parts of the brain, brain grow together. And so you, many times you have a tough time distinguishing between hunger and thirst. So as a toddler, if you remember, as a baby, they always, I want to drink, I want to drink, you have to carry sippy cups with you all the time. Babies are always thirsty. Then as they get into the toddler age, you go, oh, thank goodness I don't have to carry sippy cups with me anymore. The kid's not thirsty anymore. Well, the kid is thirsty, but now we call it hunger. Because if I drink water, I don't get any stimulation to my brain. It's good, but if I drink something like soda or sugar, 
I'm going to stimulate a part of the brain called the nucleus acumens. Nucleus acumens releases dopamine, and I get high from it. So I'm saying I'm not hungry, I'm thirsty. I'm not thirsty, I'm hungry. Uh, when in reality, I really am thirsty, but I don't get I don't get a kick out of water. I get a kick out of sugars. And so that uh, leads into addictions. And if you do have an addiction, and most of us have at least a sugar addiction, I would say go to our website, drjoe.com, and listen to the show we did on addiction. And it breaks down the neurophysiology of addiction. Really good show. What, what, uh, I really enjoyed doing that show because I, I shared with you how the brain works. And a lot of people got excited about that. So... When you're tired, water, supplementation, stay away from bad foods. Uh, the big seven, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Uh, so many of you eat those all day, every day, and they are exhausting. The number one consumer of energy we have as humans is romance. We'll keep it clean. It's a family show. The number two consumer of energy is digestion. And most of us are digesting all day, every day. We may not be having romance all day, every day, but we're digesting all day, every day. And so the harder the food is to digest, the more energy it's going to take. And the hardest foods to digest are animal proteins. So meats, butters, cheeses, yogurts, ice creams. And so they, they put a lot of strain on a digestive system using up a lot of energy. So it may not be that you need more energy. It may be that you have to stop using up so much of your energy so you have a reserve tank. And by cutting out the bad foods, especially the animal proteins, it makes life a whole lot easier. You have so much more energy uh, to spare because you're utilizing everything to try to break down this steak sandwich. Exhausting. Wheat, of course, is very uh, stressful on the digestive system as well. causes inflammatory reactions in many people. And so if we take those inflammatory foods out, uh, that's going to add more energy to your life. So you will, if, if you pay attention, you will notice that what you eat has a direct impact on why, why you're tired. And a simple t challenge I can give you is go ahead and have a salad for lunch today, tomorrow, whenever you're listening to this. And don't put cheese on it. Don't put meat on it. You could put chickpeas in it and, you know, green beans, red beans, uh, and, and just make a nice big salad. See how you feel that afternoon. The next day, I want you to have a couple of slices of pepperoni pizza, maybe some soda to go with that or an ice cream. See how you feel. You'll be exhausted. So if you know that eating certain foods will make you exhausted and you know that eating certain foods will give you energy, why would you eat the foods that make you exhausted? It makes no sense. And that's what people are doing. You're making yourself tired by a lot of the foods you eat. So we're talking today about why am I so tired? And so we're answering a lot of those questions for you. Uh, if you do have questions uh, that I don't cover in today's show, we have over 1,500 hours of podcasts on our website, drjoe.com. Feel free to go to the website. It's free. Type in what you're looking for, hit enter. Your chances are you're going to find a bunch of stuff on it. If you can't find what you're looking for, because there's a lot of health questions out there, you can send us questions through the website, and I'm more than happy to have me or my staff answer the questions directly for you. A lot of times I answer them directly. So, so if you have questions that we don't cover on any topic, search the website or send us a message through the website. And how you do that is when you go to the website, a little thing pops up in about 10 or 15, 20 seconds and says, would you like to chat? And if you do... Yes, I'd like to chat. I have a question about this. I try to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you come out of the chat, if you leave the website, uh, it has your email address, I will then email you. Please type in the right email address, by the way. I had somebody today who typed in the wrong email address, could not figure out what it was, and he put a .com instead of a .com. And when I finally figured it out, I sent you an email. So, uh, But you'll hear back from us. So why am I so tired? That's the question everybody asks. Not me, but you probably. Um, number one, of course, is you don't get enough sleep. And that's real easy and obvious. Uh, it seems so obvious that people don't think about it. Uh, that can neg neg negatively affect your concentration and your health. How much sleep should you get? I do really well with about seven hours. I usually don't make it to eight. I usually wake up somewhere between seven and eight hours. Find out what works for you. Find out what hours work and say, these are the hours I need. Make sleep a priority and put it on a regular schedule. So if you're staying up till two o'clock in the morning, um, and I mean, when I was a teenager, we used to stay out, but then we go home and go to bed. But I find teenagers now and younger people are on the internet for all hours, and sometimes the adults too, uh, till all hours of the night, going down rabbit holes and looking up one thing after another. Uh, you got to really set a time. I like 10 o'clock. That's my time. If I go to bed before 10 o'clock, I wake up too early. If I go to bed after 10 o'clock, little after is okay. Too late. I'm exhausted. My so, problem. Oh. I suffer from what is, uh been called revenge bedtime procrastination revenge R -B -P. garrett has 
Revenge Bedtime. I don't even know what that is, Garrett. It, enlighten <laughs> so our somebody, listeners. Somebody had just uh, just shared this with me the other day. Uh, it's a term that describes when people who don't have much control over their daytime life categorically refuse to go to bed early in order to regain some sense of freedom during the late night hours. That makes sense. I get that. Yeah. It's like if you spend eight, nine, ten hours working throughout the day and then mm-hmm. you go home to do chores and right. cook and clean and take care of a, a, a little dog, um, ultimately, you know, gets down. There's like one hour left of the day. And it's uh-huh. like, nah, I want more. Yes. I want more. One more episode. I didn't know how to word, but as a, 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 parents get this a lot. <laughs> you know, it's all day. It's, you know, get up early, get the kid ready to school, take them to school, pick them up from school, feed them, make sure the homework is done. And by the time they finally have time to themselves, they lose their minds. And, of course, that's a big issue with couples as well. Yep. Uh, c- couples come into us all the time and say, Doc, I just don't have any time for us. It's all the kid. It's all the work. It's all this. It's you know. It's mowing the lawn. It's raking the leaves. It's fixing the the, the the roof, and there's no time for us. And so that's why it's really important that everyone find time for themselves, or mm-hmm. if they're in a relationship, uh, the other person, um, so that you have that uh, peace and quiet that you you can reconnect. And reconnecting with yourself is really important too. So yeah, so I think along with that, making sure that you set a time for yourself and and keep to it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of of opportunity throughout the day to to take some personal time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take a break. Unfortunately, in a lot of businesses, yeah, you're supposed to you know give breaks, uh, but in certain settings, like healthcare settings, many times there, you can't schedule a break. You never know. Uh, many jobs, you can't schedule, oh, 10 o'clock is my break time. Now, some jobs are a little more structured, but I find the higher up you go in the corporate ladder, the less likely you are to say, at 10 o'clock, I'm going to take a break. It just doesn't happen <laughs> that way. So uh, and Garrett's nice? right, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? 10 o'clock, uh, nap time. I'm going to see us <laughs> I, was, uh, I was on Eric Von Hessler's show this week, and we were talking about that. How uh, on, at the break, we weren't on the air. We were talking, and, and um, uh, Tim Andrews was saying something about fatigue, and he loves taking naps. And I said, yeah, naps are great. He goes, don't make fun of me. I said, Tim, I'm not making fun of you. Naps are great. I think everybody should take a nap. But it's got to be before 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's got to be for no more than 20 minutes. Yep. If you get past 2 o'clock, you start getting into your sleep cycle again. So, But, yeah, napping is a great way to do it. Now – what you want to do then, if you do have that problem, uh, you have to say at 10 o'clock, I shut down my computer, I shut down my phone, and stop playing on the phone, and then get into your, your sleep mode. Yeah, I have Do Not Disturb. It kicks on automatically at like 8 o'clock at night. Oh, that's night, smart. So nobody can, can contact me. And I can't my phone find you. doesn't give me any um, notifications. Oh, I can't find you after 8 o'clock? I never tried, can't I guess. It. I'm going to try now. <laughs> <laughs> I take the challenge. Ha, 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 ha. Call Sierra. Call your dog Maggie. Yeah, that's what everybody does. They just call, call Sierra. Sierra. Okay, yeah. Where's Garrett? <laughs> He's trying to sleep. God. The other thing I find with sleep issues is you have to have the right chemistry. And what happens is when you wake up in the morning, your cortisol levels are high. And then as the day goes on, it should curve down. That's normal. But a lot of people, and we can do this, we, we can test cortisol levels. The cortisol stays high throughout the day. And when I first had my cortisol level test, that's how it was. I was high throughout the day. Um, from cortisol levels, and so I wasn't getting into that rest stage. And so I, that, that's why it's nice to see these blood works. I saw the blood work, and I said, okay, I have to actually make a concerted effort to make sure I'm relaxing toward the end of the day and maybe not working till 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Um, of course, there was a time when there was so many social events going on that I'd be out three, four, five nights a week, and I realized that wasn't healthy for me. It was good for socializing. It was good for networking, but it wasn't good for me. And so... One of the good things about lockdowns is that you get to get some rest. So um, we've got to pick a, a, a nap time. But the other thing I find, um, again, cortisol does that. You also have a, a hormone in your brain called melatonin. Now, melatonin, you think about it, it's the, the hormone that makes you sleep. Okay, so melatonin should go up at night and down in the morning, and cortisol is the exact opposite. What happens is, in many cases... Uh, the cortisol levels are too high and the melatonin levels are too low. And so you stay awake and don't get sleep and then you just don't get good sleep when you do sleep. So where does melatonin come from? Melatonin comes from the brain and it comes from proteins in your digestive system. So if you uh, have a good digestive system, whatever you eat, whether it's a carrot or a steak, again, if you're eating steak, you probably don't have a good digestive system, but the body's going to take proteins and break them into something called amino acids. Now, the amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain. Serotonin helps you focus. And that's why people with ADD, ADHD, uh, OCD, many times it's a serotonin issue. And we give you medications 
to utilize the little bit of serotonin that you have. Or we can just make more serotonin. We do that by fixing the digestive system. If we can fix the gut and get the proteins being broken down properly, then you get tryptophan becomes serotonin. Serotonin becomes melatonin. And so you got to make sure the gut is working. That may be why you're tired all the time. A, you're not absorbing your nutrients properly. B, you may not be eating the right nutrients. And then C, uh, you may not be breaking down the proteins properly. And so if we can get those proteins broken down properly, we can absorb them properly to produce the neurotransmitters and the serotonin becomes melatonin. Then you focus better during the day and you sleep better at night. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, many times that's easily fixed. The stomach is pushed up into the diaphragm and all my doctors, by the way, are trained by me and they're my personal doctors. So if I trust them taking care of me and Garrett and people I, I care about, I trust them taking care of you. No doctor gets to start seeing patients in our offices uh, until I approve of them and I've trained them. So all my doctors are trained to fix the acid reflux or a hiatal hernia by pulling the stomach or adjusting the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And when they do that, it's amazing. When mine acts up, I notice I start getting a uh, chronic cough, feel like I can't swallow, and I start burping a lot. So what do I do? Grab one of my doctors. I want you to adjust my stomach. They pull the stomach down, and usually within minutes, I see a difference. And in fact, I have patients, a chronic cough all the time, <coughs> coughing all the time. And when we adjust their stomach, um, many times that stops. So the danger of that is acid is coming up into your throat, and that acid can be eating away at your esophagus. Ultimately, that can cause something like esophageal cancer. So it's not a game. Acid reflux is not something you want to play with. Uh, just before uh, I came here to do the show, I was chatting with Dr. Kat, one of my doctors, and she talked about betaine hydrochloride. And uh, I love my doctors come to me with issues because they want me to break it down for them. And of course, they become better doctors then too. And Dr. Kat is brilliant anyway. And she said, betaine hydrochloride increases your stomach acid. I said, yeah, betaine hydrochloride activates pepsin, which, act which becomes pepsinogen, which then breaks down your proteins. And she said, so when people have acid reflux, many times the food is sitting in their stomach for too long and it rots. So it's not that you have too much stomach acid with acid reflux, you have too little stomach acid. And so, so, so if we give a patient betaine hydrochloride to create pepsin to create pepsinogen to break down the proteins, wouldn't that solve the problem? And I said, in many cases, yes. And she said, so why do we oftentimes give people antacids or proton pump inhibitors when we should be giving them something to increase the stomach acid, not decrease it? And I said, that's a rhetorical question. I don't know the answer to that. We know the answer. The answer is increase stomach acid, not decrease it, and then pull the stomach away from the diaphragm to break proteins into amino acids, to produce neurotransmitters, to produce melatonin, and then you're able to sleep. And so it was really great that she, she thought she was thinking along the right lines, and she just needed me to lay it out in a, in a, in a pattern. Um, and so it was really cool that I love when my doctors think on those levels and start going, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Let me figure out why it's not making sense. So anyway, that's why when you come to our offices, you're in hands of what I feel some of the best doctors in the world. My opinion, some of the best doctors in the world, uh, because they're my doctors. And I wouldn't let them take care of me if I don't let them take care of you. Um, so anyway, that's one of the reasons why you're tired all the time. You're not absorbing your food. You're not breaking down the proteins into amino acids. And with acid reflux, when you lay down, the acid can come up into your throat, and that can cause snoring. It can cause uh, burning, heartburn, and uh, that can prevent you from sleeping properly. And also, if the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, when you inhale, the stomach drops down, and when you exhale, the stomach moves up. And so if the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, if you're standing, you have gravity assist. If you're laying down, you don't have gravity, so you may not be getting enough air into your lungs because the diaphragm isn't moving because the stomach is up against the diaphragm, not breaking proteins into amino acids to produce neurotransmitters to produce melatonin. Wow. So many times when you have sleep issues or sleep apnea or snoring, it's a physical issue that causes a chemical issue that's so easy to fix. And that's the kicker. So many times patients come to us, and the biggest complaint I get, been doing this for 37 years, Biggest complaint I get is, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I, I, I figure out that if I got my body healthy, I would function better? In fact, I was at the studio uh, today, as a matter of fact, early today. And one of my bosses, he said, now, how far apart are you, you and I in years? And I told him how old I was. And he said, oh, my gosh, you're a heck of a lot older than me. I thought you were my age. He says, I look older than you. And I didn't say anything, uh, but because <laughs> he doesn't. I don't think he does. But 
I was flattered that somebody I've worked with for years now, 10 years, still didn't know how old I was. And that's really flattering. They thought I was a lot younger. So we can maintain our health and maintain our youth by making sure the nervous system is working, the digestive system is working, and your diet is right. And so if you do have a health issue, I'm going to have to go to break pretty soon. But if you do have a health issue, uh, you want to come see us. We have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. Uh, initial visit was uh, 375. We've reduced that to 199. That includes x-rays, yeah, even x-rays, adjustment, exam, consultation, going over the x-rays on your follow-up visit, and the nutritional evaluation. Nutritional follow-up alone is $150. So you get all that for $199, and then you're probably going to need more care from that. We accept insurance, uh, most insurances, for care beyond that. If you've ever been in a car accident, you were damaged. If the car was damaged, you were damaged. So you need to come see us right away. Even if you don't have symptoms, let us check you to make sure everything's okay. It's like you look at your car, it's making noise, you don't see anything, you crawl up underneath and uh, I don't know, the frame is bent. So stop suffering needlessly, stop having health issues. And the nice part is we are Health Plus Wellness Centers. So we have a medical division. So we can do hormone balance. We can take your blood, check your hormones, and then we can help balance it with nutrition or bioidentical hormones. We have a, a service called PRP, which is just amazing. PRP, we take your own platelets out of your blood and re-inject them into the joint to help with inflammation and swelling and speed up the healing process. You add chiropractic to that, you got an amazing combination of putting the bones back in place and bringing down the inflammation and stimulating the cells that create new, new, new tissue. Uh, PRP can be used for so many different things. Uh, uh, hair, if you've got uh, balding, not totally bald, but bald spots, uh, non-surgical facial, uh, erectile dysfunction, way less expensive than most other treatments and works in most cases just as well. Uh, for women, if you have leaky bladder, if you have issues after having children, uh, same thing with uh, romantic issues, PRP can be used there as well. So PRP is crazy good on so many different levels. And if we need medicine, if we need pain control, you need an injection into the spine, the knee, we have that available as well. So we really are a one-stop shop for health and wellness. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com, uh, or you can uh, book it right online, or you can call us or send us a message through the website, and we'll get you booked as soon as possible. Again, offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We're talking about why you're so tired all the time. Uh, sleep apnea, we kind of covered with the stomach. Sleep apnea is uh, so common. I remember my father used to snore, my grandmother used to snore, my mother would snore, and from what I understand, um, all of those things could have been easily fixed because I didn't a analyze them. Unfortunately, only my mom's still with us, but looking at patients, when we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm and the diaphragm starts moving again, so many times solves the problem of sleep apnea as well. Um, many times you're overweight and when you lay down the, the, the big fat stomach, I used to be fat, pushes up against your diaphragm. And so we also have a, a doctor supervised weight loss program that we can put you on to help control that weight issue as well and pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. And then we got to check the spine as well. Because the nerves from the spine control everything. So if you have a rib out of place, if you have bo bones in the spine out of place, put them back in place, and it allows the, the ribs to start moving back and forth, allowing natural breathing to occur. So sleep apnea many times is a physical issue that, again, causes a chemical issue as well. So if you have that, you might want to come see us, and let's see what's going on. Because sleep apnea is not something that's just annoying. It's actually dangerous because you're not getting enough oxygen and you're gasping for air, you're not getting into that deep sleep and that affects your health on so many different levels. Uh, many times we talked about that earlier, people just not getting enough fuel. And so the minimum supplements I recommend people should take are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source and then eating a good diet as well. Folks, gotta go to break. The website, drjoe.com. If you have any questions, send us through the website. Uh, sign up to make an appointment. Uh, tell your friends about the show because we got a lot more to cover, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We will be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am so glad you're with me today. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you stayed with us, uh, I'm glad you stayed with us. What we're talking about today, we're answering the question, why am I so tired? And patients give me that all the time. They come in with their neck pain and their back pain and their headaches and their digestive issues and their car accidents and their arthritis. And they see me or they see a medical division we have for PRP and um, hormone balancing and restoration, anti-aging, um, regenerative medicine. So we, we cover a lot in our clinics. Um, but inevitably, a lot of people will say, and by the way, I'm also very tired. 
So uh, we said earlier you can take supplements, things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Essential Source, Nitric Oxide, uh, B-Complex, Adrenal Support. Those things will give you energy. I mean, that's, that's going to work. We know that. Uh, but we also try to get to the cause of the problems, like we do in everything, and not just treat the symptoms. So one thing that can happen a lot is anemia. Uh, especially with women of childbearing years, because when you have your menstrual cycle, of course, you can lose iron and that can become an issue. Uh, with men, it's not so big a deal because we don't really lose a lot of blood. And so one of the issues we have as men is our iron levels can get too high. And in fact, high iron is probably more dangerous than low iron. And so how do you know you have too much iron? Well, a simple, cheap, free way to do it, I mean, I'd love to do it in our office and test you for it, is go donate blood. When you donate blood, first thing they do is, one of the first things they do is they prick your finger and they check for iron. And they can tell you if you have too little or too much. And that's one way to figure it out. But if you need iron, and again, most, peop- most men don't, but a lot of women do, um, you want to eat something red or green. So strawberries, cherries, rhubarb. I know who eats rhubarb, right? Um, red beans. Anything red or green is going to have uh, iron in it. And it's called a non-heme iron. Heme iron comes from blood. That's what heme, like a hematologist. So it comes from animal blood. Where do the animals get it from? The non-heme iron, from the plants. So the animals will eat the plants, get the non-heme iron, convert it into heme iron, and then you could drink the animal's blood and get iron from it. Or, I think the wiser thing, is just eat the plants. And so anything red or green is going to give you good iron, uh, good iron levels. Super green is an essential source, great source of non-heme iron. And the non-heme iron is easily absorbed as long as vitamin C is present. And plants have vitamin C in them, so nature kind of handled that for you already. So uh, check your iron levels. Again, you want to come see us. We can do blood work on you. We'd be more than happy to do that for you. And then do a holistic approach on balancing out the blood work. Had a patient the other day call me, and she said, Dr. Joe, I have uh, hypothyroidism, and I'm taking medication. And I started taking Super Greens and Essential Source. I put her on specific thyroid supplements as well. And Super Greens and Essential Source of high in iodine, which is necessary for thyroid function. And she said, I went back to my doctor. My doctor said, we don't need to put you on medication anymore. You're off. You're done. He said, I don't see people come off their medication very often. What have you done? And she said, well, I follow Dr. Joe's guidelines. And the doctor said, oh, Dr. Joe, just listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. And so a lot of doctors, nurses, hospitals know who we are because they listen to the shows, obviously. And so they'll even send us patients. Hey, listen, we don't know what to do with this one. (laughs) See what you can do with it. We're kind of stuck here. And again, I'm not a medical doctor. They're not uh, holistic practitioners. And so we work together very nicely because sometimes you need medicine. We Again, we have a medical doctor in our office. And we have patients sometimes where the joints are so jammed up where we have to go in there and do an injection into the joint. Maybe do an ablation, which is kind of uh, 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 destroying the nerve. It grows back, but you can destroy the nerve uh, short term so that you're able to get in there and do better adjustments. So we do the chiropractic and the medicine and the nutrition and the digestion all in one place, which is kind of cool. Um, but again, doctors sometimes will say, we don't know what to do with this patient. Help them out. Now, depression can make you fatigued as well. And that contributes to a lot of physical symptoms, fatigue, headaches, loss of appetite, really common symptoms. You feel down for weeks. Uh, Again, we all have bad days, and that's okay as long as you realize that's short term. If you're in a depressed state for weeks, uh, you might want to do something about it. Now, we talked earlier about the stomach breaking proteins into amino acids, and amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain. So if you're not breaking down your foods properly, that can lead to low levels of neurotransmitters, which can lead to depression. Tyrosine becomes dopamine. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that gives you pleasure. And so if you're tired all the time, uh, you may not be experiencing pleasure in life. So you're thinking, why am I even here? Why am I doing this? Well, usually easy to fix if we can fix the digestive system. And then glutamine becomes GABA, and GABA is going to affect norepinephrine, and norepinephrine works with epinephrine to give you energy. So if you have a digestive issue, you're not breaking down your foods properly, that can lead to fatigue. Not only not absorbing the nutrients, but not getting the raw materials to produce the neurotransmitters. And so, so many times when I have fatigued patients, it's from chemical issues, food, physical issues, stomach up against the diaphragm or pinched nerves, and which then can lead to emotional issues. And those are the three major stresses we have. So if we can fix that, that's great. Now, fatigue can occur, can occur if you're not getting enough sleep, which many times is related to pain. So if you have neck pain, back pain, headaches numbness, tingling, restless leg syndrome, you might want to come see us for that. In fact, you don't want, might want to, you should come see us for that. Because many, many, many times, and again, I've seen thousands, probably tens of thousands of patients in my career, we get them out of pain, 
Doc, I slept first time through the night. Oh my God, I feel so much better. My brain is better. My relationships are better. My work is better. My love life is better. I'm going to bathroom better. Everything changes when you get a good night's sleep. And so many times we can get to that by correcting the physical issues like neck pain and back pain, many times caused by pinched nerves. And as chiropractors, my team of chiropractors and medical doctors, we're really good at dealing with pain patients. In fact, I'm the only chiropractor in, in Georgia board certified in pain management. And so when I go to conferences, I'm the only one out there. I'm, I'm, I'm the unicorn there. And it's funny because I remember, a while, it hadn't been to a conference in a while, but I remember I was at a conference one time and the doctors will come up to me and say, you're Joe Esposito. Yeah, Dr. Joe, right? Yeah. And they said, listen, we got this one patient and they've given the injections. They've done the, the pain management, the traditional pain management, and the patient isn't responding and they don't know what to do. And then I'll offer chiropractic or I'll talk about nutrition and you know neurotransmitter production. And inevitably, they'll sit there and go, that's brilliant. I never thought of it like that before. Wow, that's really cool. And doctors and nurses, when they come in as patients, same thing. I've never thought of it like that before. Again, we're not doing anything magical that I invented. We're doing things that are, we're looking at it from a different angle. And doctors and nurses make our best patients because they get excited when I break it down like this and they go, wow, that makes perfect sense. And so again, chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for most back pain. Why wouldn't you start with chiropractic? Again, if we need medicine, we have medicine in the office. We have doctors we can refer you to if we need to. But start simple. I cannot tell you how many patients I've seen over the years that say, I went to the surgeon and he says I need surgery. Now, maybe you do. But let's see if there's an alternative to that. And countless patients have not needed the surgery. They go back to the doctor. The surgeon looks at them and says, well, whatever it is, it's not there anymore. Or it's better. Keep doing what you're doing. Now, that's a good surgeon. A bad surgeon will say, let's cut you open because I want to get paid. But a good surgeon will say, listen, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it because we can avoid surgery at all costs. That's our goal. And I work with good surgeons. And many times I'll send a patient over there and they'll say, you know what, Joe? You know, Garrett is not a surgical case at this point. I want you to keep working with her for another three to six weeks or whatever it is. And let's see what happens then. Because patients sometimes are just screaming in pain. I want surgery. I want this. And I'm like, I'll give you what you want, but not what you need. And so we work very closely with a team of amazing doctors, and I'm proud of not only my doctors in-house, but the doctors I work with outside our offices as well. So we're talking today about why am I so tired, answering that question. The thyroid, I kind of covered that briefly. Uh, low thyroid can really zap your energy, can cause you to gain weight. Um, so we can do a thyroid test in our office to see where you are. And then sometimes, many times, we can fix it with good diet, supplementation, sometimes medication short-term, and kind of reboot the thyroid, but the thyroid and the adrenal glands feed off each other and the pituitary gland. It's, it's called the, the axis, we call it. And one sends message, like the pituitary gland sends a message to the thyroid, tells the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone. The adrenal glands produce adrenaline to give you energy. And so they feed off each other. And so if we're just treating the thyroid, we may not be getting to the cause of the problem because it might be a pituitary gland issue, might be an adrenal gland issue, might be a dietary issue, might be that you're not getting enough iodine issue. You're getting too much bromine, chlorine, and fluorine, which look like iodine and can clog up the thyroid and don't let iodine in. And so there's a lot of different things we can look at aside from just throwing medicine at you, which sometimes is needed, not against medicine. Please understand that. But if we can get to the cause of the problem, we usually get better results. And that's what we do in our offices. So again, why am I tired so time? Uh, all the time. Uh, caffeine overload, we talked about that earlier in the show, that uh, if you missed that, it's going to be on our website, drjoe.com. You could listen to this show. It's also on uh, Facebook, right, Garrett? This is on our Facebook page? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's on our Facebook page as well. Um, you can type in the date or you can type in the t topic. And we covered caffeine, how too much caffeine causes your body to produce more adenosine. Adenosine is the horm a chemical in your brain that makes you tired. Caffeine prevents adenosine from being absorbed. And so the body produces more adenosine absorption sites so that you can absorb more adenosine so you can get tired. Your body wants you to sleep and the caffeine saying, no, don't sleep. So caffeine overload isn't a good idea. Uh, again, soft drinks, uh, coffee, tea, chocolate, all of these ca ca contain caffeine. If you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com. And uh, we have a type in, so what can I eat? I did a whole lecture, a whole hour actually, it was just me in a studio, talking about breakfast, lunches, dinners, snacks, parties, raising kids. It's all there for an hour. It's great. It's yours. It's free. Um, if you want to know what not to eat, we did a show called The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. And you could, that's a video and an audio. You can listen to that and learn what not to eat. So there's the starting point. What not to eat, what to eat. That's step number one. I wrote a book a while ago. The first book I ever wrote is called Eating Right for the Health of It. And in the book, we talk about how to change your diet 
And then we have recipes in there. So it really is the guideline on how to eat and what, what to eat. So that's also available on the website, drjoe.com. Another reason people get tired all the time is they have a subclinical infection. Okay, sometimes urinary tract infections, you might be familiar with that burning and itching, but it may not announce itself right away. Uh, you know, we can do a test to see if you have a urinary tract infection, but you may have a systemic yeast infection. And yeast is something that lives in your colon, and along with about 100 different types of bacteria, it's called the flora of the colon. Um, and what happens is the, the, the yeast eats sugar. And so the bacteria are breaking down foods and eating it and then spitting out what they don't want, and then you absorb their waste products. That's how you absorb nutrients. I Sorry to break it down to you like that. Um, and the yeast wants to eat the sugar. But if you, you take antibiotics, if you drink chlorinated water, I made some tea today right before the show, and I had to use tap water. I usually use filtered water. And I boy, it tastes like pool water to me. I just taste the chlorine. And so I'm sensitive to that because I, I, I drink filtered water all the time. And so what happens is chlorine can act as an antibiotic and kill off the good bacteria in your colon, leaving the yeast behind. And the yeast then starts to multiply because it doesn't have a lot of competition for food anymore. And the yeast can burrow itself into your colon and get into your blood system, and that's called a systemic yeast infection. So if you have a systemic yeast infection, that may be why you're tired all the time because it's using up so much energy. The yeast is stealing all the glucose and the sugars, and you're tired all the time. Uh, many times you crave sugars when you have a yeast infection. So we can do a test to see if you have a yeast infection, but a simple thing you can do at home, get a clear glass of water, put it next to your bed, and tomorrow morning when you wake up, get a big mouthful of spit. Scrape your tongue, get a big mouthful of spit. Scrape your tongue with your teeth. Spit in the glass. Wait up to an hour. If you start to see little tentacles start to come down from this wad of spit, chances are you have a systemic yeast infection. If you have this, you need to come see us because we got to get you on a protocol. Uh, it's pretty in-depth, the protocol, but it's really, really important that you wipe out that yeast infection because it can be very serious. I had one. Because uh, when I was a kid, I always had sinus problems, and my mother always gave me antibiotics. And I remember going to Dr. Waltman. He's dead now. I can say his name. And uh, he'd give me antibiotics for anything because it was cool back then. Anything you had, you had, antibiotics. So I'm sure that destroyed the colon, the bacteria in my colon. And so I always had runny nose. I always had rashes. I always had mucus everywhere. I was tired all the time, bloated, bad breath. And once I finally realized it was a systemic yeast infection, I treated it. Amazing. It was like night and day. So yeast infection is one of those hidden things that nobody really looks for. Uh, but it, it's a protocol you got to get on. It's not just to take a nitric oxide and get some energy. It's a protocol we got to put you on. But it, it's not something you want to jerk around with. You want to get rid of those yeast infections. We can give you medication for it, like Flagel. Um, however, that can cause liver damage. So I'd rather try natural first before we go to the medicine if, if we need it, if we can do that. Other reasons why you're tired all the time. You have diabetes. Now, there's also diabetes as well as uh, prediabetes. And pre-diabetes is your blood sugar starting to go up, but it's not there all the way. Now, I did a show on diabetes. I don't want to give you a whole lecture on diabetes. It's on the website, drjoe.com, along with 1,500 hours of other shows. And those are yours for free, man. Take them, use them, download them, share them with your friends, whatever you want to do with them. They're your shows. Uh, but diabetes is a big issue because you, you may, A, not be producing enough insulin. That's type 1 diabetes. And then type 2 diabetes is you're producing plenty of insulin. In fact, you probably produce too much insulin. And the way insulin works is it goes to a cell and acts like a key. It opens up the cell and lets sugar in. If you produce too much sugar, the cells become insulin resistant. They don't want to play anymore. They don't want to open up the cell anymore because you're going to dump too much sugar in there. It's going to gunk up the works. So the cells become insulin resistant. So you may have plenty of insulin, but it's not utilizing the sugar because it's not opening up the cells. And so your blood sugar can raise. And that's called type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. So if you have that, that's easily fixed in most cases uh, with lifestyle changes, diet, exercise. We may have to get, you know, medic medically, we may have to get you on insulin short term. But with type 2 diabetes, most cases, not all, are very manageable with diet and, and making sure the nervous system is working, supplementation. Uh, type 1, probably going to need insulin. It is what it is. Your body's just not producing insulin. Uh, we talked earlier about another reason you're tired all the time is dehydration. You're just not drinking enough water. So drink enough water throughout the day so your urine is just light-colored or clear. That's what you're looking for. Uh, two cups uh, an hour or more before a planned physical activity is always a good idea, you know, if you're going to go out hiking or something like that. And many times, like I said, when you're hungry, you're not hungry, you're thirsty. So one of the tips I give in my weight loss seminars is 
drink a big glass of water, two, three cups of water before every meal. You will be amazed how much less you eat. Because again, many times when you're hungry, you're not hungry, you're thirsty. And so that solves that problem. Other reasons why you're tired all the time. You might have a health problem, like heart disease. My father had congestive heart failure, um, and he, uh, he had rheumatic fever as a child, and it wasn't treated properly. He needed medical treatment, and he didn't get medical treatment. So the infection got into his uh, heart and affected his mitral valve. It's one of the valves in the heart. So I remember one day coming home from college, I guess it was, and my father was just sitting at the table with his head down, yellow as he can be, couldn't breathe, scared the heck out of me. We rushed him to the hospital, and they said, you got him here just in time, he would have died otherwise. And his heart was just not working. The, the valve it became so weak because he had a rheumatic fever, he had an infection that wasn't treated properly, uh, that the valve became weak. So they did an operation, they put a, a plastic heart in his valve. Now my dad was deaf, and so he, it was so it was funny because every time his heart would be to hear click, 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 click. And it didn't bother him because he was deaf, but you're in a room with him and you hear click, 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 click. And if he's watching like a sporting event or something, he's getting excited, click, 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 click. And so um, with him, he was getting tired and tired. We just thought, well, he's getting, he wasn't older, but I figured, well, he's just, you know, he's probably needs some rest. When in reality, it was heart condition. So uh, we found it. They did surgery on him, amazing, a uh, place called Deborah Hospital in New Jersey. They did an amazing job and he added many, many decades to his life. So in a case like that, you need medical attention. That wasn't a chiropractic case. The nutrition may have helped him, but again, I didn't know anything back then of what I know now. So, um, but medicine saved his life and added many, many years to his life. So uh, if you're becoming increasingly difficult to finish tasks that were once easy, uh, you might notice heart arrhythmias, the heart beating irregularly, you might want to get that checked. And there's no reason not to. I am perfectly good with getting diagnostic tests. As long as it's not dangerous, you know, you're not injecting radiation into the body or something. But, you know, diagnostic test, a heart evaluation, perfectly fine with that. And let's see if we can catch things early because the earlier we get to anything, the better results we're going to get. And that goes with pain too. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, the sooner we get to you, the easier it's going to be to work on it in most cases. And that's why with car accidents, the insurance companies, by the way, being jerks lately, if you don't get to the doctor within like two weeks, the insurance company can deny your claim, but you aren't hurt. Well, sometimes you could be hurt and the pain doesn't show up for up to six months. And yet the insurance company is saying two weeks you have after that, we're going to deny the claim and make it really difficult for you to file a claim. And a lot of attorneys won't even take cases after two weeks now. Like it's not worth it. It's too much work on their part, which always amazes me because they get a third of the settlement. They should be doing some work. Um, and some attorneys do, some don't. I work with some good ones, and so I'm not knocking all attorneys, but I've seen a lot of them take the case, and you don't hear from them until they, they send a claim in, and uh, they get an offer. They take the first offer, and, and you're out of luck. You know, the attorney gets a third of whatever they get, and you're, you're kind of stuck then. Anyway, that's why if you are in a car accident, come see us right away is what I'm getting at. If the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. And sometimes, again, the sooner we get to it, the easier it is. Sometimes the longer something is setting in, so to speak, the harder it is to fix. So whether it's heart disease or diabetes or cancer or uh, osteoporosis or pain, the quicker we can get to you, the better off you're going to be. And again, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. If you want to make an appointment, don't be like so many of my other patients that say, why didn't I do this sooner? Go to our website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right online. And, or you can call us either way. We're more than happy to do it. You can send us a message through the website, and then we'll call you, but it's easier if you just call us. And we'll get you set up. The initial visit uh, was $375. We've reduced it to $199. Uh, if you want to make an appointment, that includes an exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, nutritional evaluation on a second visit, and going over your x-rays. The nutritional evaluation alone is $150. So you're getting a lot, and we want to make it affordable because now is the time I want people to get well and stay well. And that's my goal is get you healthy. Uh, after that, you're probably going to need more visits. We, cut, we accept most insurances, Medicare, uh, car accidents, again, sports injuries. We have cash plans available. Make it very affordable. We want to be your doctors. And then if we do need medical intervention, we have our medical division. PRP we can do. Exosomes we can do. Um, pain management we can do injections. Sometimes we need to do injections into a joint to calm it down. Hormone balancing, we can do a hormone test on you to see if there's any imbalances in your hormones and then recommend either supplements, maybe short-term uh, uh, bioidentical hormones. Uh, so we try to do everything we can with the PRP, by the way, too. We can inject that into the joint to stimulate uh, the healing process and decrease inflammation, but the PRP can be used for so many other things, non-surgical facials, um, uh, 
Uh, hair, uh, if you have spotty hair growth, we can inject PRP into the scalp and stimulate hair growth. Erectile dysfunction, way less expensive than most other treatments that are out there and very effective. Uh, for women as well, if there's a sexual dysfunction, leaky bladder, we can do PRP there as well. So there's a lot of things that we can do in our offices. And everybody who comes in, most everybody says, I didn't know I could even do this. I had no idea that we can stimulate uh, natural growth factors back into the joint. Yeah, you can in most cases. Uh, I didn't know you can do a non-surgical facial. Yeah, you can. Uh, so we have a lot of services available. They're on the website, drjoe.com. Under the drop down, it says services. And why suffer? Why, 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 why not give in to the fact that there are things that we can do for anti-aging? There are things that we can do for regenerative medicine, for pain, I mean, as simple as, as pain, for acid reflux, for digestive issues, for nutritional deficiencies, just make an appointment, drjoe.com, you can do it right online. So we're talking today about uh, sleep, uh, why am I so tired all the time. Uh, at the break, we live stream these shows, by the way, too. So you really, your homework, by the way, I, I didn't give you your homework assignment yet. Your homework assignment this week, as it is every week, is I need you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The, my handle is at Dr. Joe Esposito. And I need your help, especially on Instagram, because I want to become an influencer. And we're, get, we're already an influencer by definition, but at 10,000 followers, you become a, 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 you get a check mark and it gives you more, it opens up more uh, avenues for you on Instagram. So I need your help on this. So follow us at Dr. Joe Esposito. Please tell all your friends, your family, your kids, just follow us. You'll never hear from me again. Don't worry about it, but I need your help. And we post every day. So if you like health tips, we'll post something every day for you. Um, so I need you to do that. But at the break, we take questions and uh, somebody asked about their husband who's a fireman and he has, so it's shift work. And that's a big issue. Nighttime shifts, rotating shifts can disrupt, disrupt your internal clock. You might feel tired. We need to be awake. So a couple of things you want to do is limit your exposure to daylight when you need rest. Because daylight uh, stimulates the pineal gland and that kind of wakes you up. Uh, make your room very dark, quiet, and cold. Uh, 68 to 72 degrees is the ideal temperature for sleeping. Uh, so make your room dark. Make it nighttime. Even if you're sleeping during the day, blackout curtains, maybe a mask, uh, earplugs, maybe run a sound machine. You can do that as well. Um, and this way, that'll, that white noise will help you get to sleep. And then there are some supplements and medication you might want to consider. But if you are doing the night shift and working weird hours, you really want to um, do everything you can to get that sleep because it can be very dangerous. Food allergies can be an issue. That may be why you're tired all the time. The number one food allergen is dairy. And the number two food allergen is wheat. So simple thing I want everybody to do anyway is stop taking dairy and wheat. Stop putting it in your body. And here's my challenge for you because you're thinking, I can't do that, Dr. Joe. No wheat, no dairy, two weeks. Very simple. At the end of two weeks, have yourself a slice of pizza which has dairy and wheat in it. See how you feel. Chances are you're going to feel awful. And you're going to say, Dr. Joe was right. If I don't eat wheat and dairy, I feel better. So that's what I'd suggest you do is cut those out. And then again, you might have chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, you may have other issues as well. And, and for those cases, you might want to come see us so we can evaluate it further. So if the basic uh, tips don't work, come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. You can book it right online. DrJoe.com is our website, D-R-J-O-E. Um, you can call us from the website, send us messages. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, Medicare. Uh, and my doctors are off the chart. And we have our medical division as well. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.